First of all, Hadi, I welcome you here to the Saika's territories. My name is Chief Stanley Thomas. It's a great honor for me to be here to open such a special, special meeting. This is my third term as a chief for this community, and we run approximately 750 the population here. <clears throat> Two clans comes out of our territories, the grouse and the frog, and I am a frog. Our land is our gathering. <clears throat> of the special gifts of healing. And only special people like yourselves know that protocol with the land itself. These are words of wisdom given to me over the years from the elders. Our elders left us many gifts for us they give us faith to emulate they give us strength to desire they give us a vision to admire they give us their words to follow they give us our names to carry this has come from our creator that's what they say. So I welcome you here today to our territories. And in the next two days, that we have a protocol with the land and only you people, the special people within your respective territories that we show the world what we are really made of and what the Creator has given you as special gifts to voice those gifts to this world. Tell the general population that everything is sacred out there. It was told by our people. So I welcome you all to our territories and I wish you well in the next two days to share in your wisdom amongst one another, to re-strengthen that tie we have with the land. Must see. And at this time, I'm going to give um, tobacco to each and every one of the traditional healers. And before I do so, I'd like to thank Minnie Thomas, Mabel Louie, Bob Smith, and the rest of the CSFS staff that bring you together today to share your wisdom and knowledge so we can pass it on to our next generations. So I'm just going to give the tobacco.
I guess the next on the agenda is the introductions. Could I go around the table this way and go right around? My name is Maisie Medici. I'm from Halfway River First Nation, 75 miles out of north of Fort St. John. And I've, I've been doing this plant study with my community since 96. And I've, I've got another job offer that I start, I'm going to start working with land use study. I'm really excited about this post study study, but this is very important <coughs> to me too because I'm learning from other. Because I went to one conference last year in Minamo, I learned a lot from the other people. So I'm really glad to be here with you to share my knowledge, and I just would like to thank you, the, the chief, for a good speech in me. We have, I had some concern, the same concern we had with our land, so thank you. My name is Alice Medici, I'm from uh, Aqua River First Nation. And I've been working with uh, Shirley and me, my sister, for two years doing a plant study, also food, plants. And we've been learning a lot of new things each day. We're working and we're teaching our young generation. Um, and also we, we're teaching them all the medicine plants that we, we know. And I really glad to be here to meet a lot of new people that I would like to learn more things from other people. My name is Ria George. I'm a Bear Clan and my name is Galahkan. I'm from Burns Lake. I'm a Watsodin. I'm very happy and honored to be here amongst all the elders. Uh, many and Mabel had come to my house about two years ago and they were asking questions about the planned medicine. I grew up in a territory with my parents. We, we lived in an isolated area and I'm pretty familiar with all the plants. The medicine that we use off the land and all the the parts of the animals that we use for <coughs> healing. And then I married and I married into a traditional family. And I also learned quite a bit from my traditional family, from my in-laws. I'm the only one of Roman Lake Band, along with my late husband that, that would be making Indian medicine for healing. I brought with me some samples of everything that I had on hand. I, I went out to pick Hudson's Bay tea yesterday off territory and what we're using it for. And I brought some soap berries, Nawas. We're using it for healing in different ways. And I have um, bear grease that we use for healing, and also spruce gum that we're using for healing, and just a little demonstration of these things that I brought with me. And thanks again, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm also here to learn from other nations. Thank you. My name is Huyak. It's a name given to me by the people from Barrow, Alaska, in the top of the world. My English name is Kathy Nelson. I am an ordained healing minister from the Universal Life Church in California. Hello, my sister. I feel uh, very 
very, very honored and humbled to be amongst you. I understand what you mean, Mary, by I'm not alone. I work with my hands. I also pick a lot of my own medicine. And I use traditional and natural herbs from the stores. I am a, a distributor for three or four other herbal companies that I buy from because I have not been able to get enough from our own people that make them. And my goal is to find someone that makes these medicines that I use for people that I treat. I recommend to certain clients that I work with the medicines that they need that will help them. And I didn't know what, what it was, I, what was expected of me up here, but I brought a little bit of just about everything that I carry in my home. And I even brought some of my own grain bread that I make my own jam, and my own uh, a cake, a banana cake that I make. It's all homemade. I also have some of my own ear medicine, and we were talking earlier about patent, patenting. How, how do you say that? Patent it? And I just use it. That medicine has never failed yet. Um, I am a great believer in the land. <coughs> I have been up in this territory blockading. I have family further, further west. So, I am a firm believer. If I believe <coughs> in something, I'm going to stand up for it. And the comment that my elder, Mary, who I'm so glad to have met here, said, I am not alone anymore. Uh, my name is Hilda George from Tagwa First Nation. Uh, Glad to meet you today. I'm only the one that I do all kinds of medicine. I bring some, but it was still in truck more and bring it in. So my big name, because my dad is named Miata from Fort Graham area. That's the area my grandmother come from. My dad is his, his mom. The other one from Tache, the great grandma from that side too. So my mom is still with me a long time, nine, 95 year old. Last two years ago he died, 96 he was. So all kinds I do when, when I was growing up. One of my, my auntie, he started bleeding his, his uh, ulcer or something, so they tell me, just go, get it. So 20 years old, I start to do it, this medicine. From now, I still start for it. Lots of people I help in my own area. I have to be far away, I go up there and get it. Right now, we use the clacking. Every time I get those medicines, I pray to God first. God, he made love for us. That's where we get all this medicine. Before I cut, I pray. Mommy said, just ask God to stop. You have to use it for nice tree, like all kinds of water now when we touch it. 
little while then after July, after that we used to do that. Not now, the little tree is growing up, so they tell us not to touch it for a while, so I bring a little bit, lots of kids to uh, help in Taka. So thanks for all, oh, we all get together. That's how we want to learn to, but the other people who all kind different maybe different kinds of medicine we have, but look like it's all the same to me the sound so thanks God we made it here me and my daughter Kathleen. My name is Mary John and uh, me too I am a great believer of uh, herbal medicine. I've been trying to teach the young people who go out on field trips and teach them what plants is for what. And that's what I've been doing till last year, you know, when I got struck by what I have now. So I am not much good to anybody anymore. So I came here and I thought I would share a few things what I know. Thank you. My name is Susan Thomas from Western Nation. And um, I've been raised here, and that's a great honor for me. And I do, I do make medicine for those who ask for it. My late husband used to do that, and he taught me a lot too, and I've known a lot from my mother at Mountain Valley, and so now I don't have parents who help me anymore and I'm on my own but still I always happy to join other elders like now father and I know most of the people so I brought some plants there that I would show later whenever and I'm really honored thank you My name is Mary Thomas. I firmly believe in uh, honoring your territory as a as a Hwatmuk elder, Shushwat, they call us. I was taught that when you're invited to other people's territory that you honor them and thank them. And I want to thank you for inviting me to be here with you today. I guess having lived my life like in a tangled web, having personally experienced the hardship that our people have been forced to live in comparison to what it was like when we were a free people when we were connected to Mother Nature. We didn't give up our culture voluntarily. It was cruelly taken away from us. And for that reason, we were, we were a very sick people. And having to raise a family all alone, my husband died of alcohol when my children were very young. I had to struggle to raise my children. And I didn't want to raise them the way I see in life going, like a lost people. I struggled to find ways and means to get rid of that stereotyping of our people, lazy, good-for-nothing, dirty Indians. I guess as growing up, I was full of hate for the white man. And I knew I had to heal before I could help my children. My older ones were beginning to get involved in alcohol. Being a single mother, it was a tough job. I felt that in order for me to help my children, I had to heal both physically, mentally, socially. And I worked very hard at it. 
I was very fortunate to have a mother who died at 102. My aunt died at 103. They shared with me a lot of the knowledge of our culture. And because of that, I got involved in the education system. I worked in a university and colleges just the other day, Monday, I was in the Prince George University teaching a course there on how our children were raised in the traditional way, the children raising. And I've also gotten into the plant as well as the environment. I've worked with the University of Victoria in analyzing a lot of the, the medicinal contents and how will it work for us. I questioned it many times in my studies that because of the way we eat today, the junk food we feed our children, what, how does it affect, how does the medicinal, traditional medicines work now as opposed to yesterday. And I found that there's a lot of drastic changes we have to make. <coughs> if we're going to go into the traditional medicines, there are certain things we have to give up. And I'm afraid I, I have to say this, coffee is the number one there is a substance in your coffee that will kill the natural medicinal purpose. Caffeinated tea is bad for you. Soda pop is another one. Alcohol. As long as you're indulging in those things, you're going to have a hard time to get the tra traditional medicines to work. I had the opportunity to, to do this type of job with the university, studying the contents of the medicines, the natural medicines. I didn't bring any kind of uh, exhibit on the medicines. I came here honored, feeling honored that you invited me. But I brought along a set of slides, and each slide has a story in itself pertaining to the medicinal purpose as well as the environment. And uh, I think they're going to be bringing me a screen. I'm just hoping my old tape recorder works as old as I am, so I hope it works. <laughs> I will be sharing with you some of the things, just sort of like food for thought, some of the things that I have personally put together and studied as well as with the University of Victoria. I, I always walk with humility. I always feel humble. And I've been offered so many degrees, so many uh, plaques and honorary. I'm not looking for that. That's not what I want as a title. University of Victoria has been practically begging me for the last two years to give me an honorary doctor title, and I've been refusing it, saying the day, my reward will be the day when our people begin to heal. And that's why being here with you today is very emotional. I feel both happiness that you young people are accepting us as elders because of the struggle we've been put through. We are survivors. And I feel really, really sorry for our male counterpart. Every gathering I've gone to, it doesn't matter at what level, I look around and I say, where is our leaders, where is our men? We as mothers have that natural instinct of protecting our families. That's what kept us strong and still together, united. I've been involved in the Native Women's Society. I've worked with the homemakers from years back. It's always the women. I remember the day we went, I accompanied two young people to, 
Toronto when we were talking on behalf of our children in relating to the drugs and alcohol to meet with Madame Beijan. I was there with the young people. And that's where the drugs uh, treatment centers and drug counselors, alcohol counselors started. Madame Beijan agreed that we needed that. Our children were getting lost. And I really commend you today that even though we're all women here, we have to pray for our men to be strong again because they, in our culture, were the providers, they were the protectors. My question, where are they? This morning we drove up here. My daughter was kind enough to bring me here. I've seen a lot of hitchhikers going down to town and I prayed all the way. The Creator carry them and heal them. We are here to talk about ways and means of healing. And I feel that we are blessed to be able to contribute even if it's just a little bit. So I want to thank you again for having me here, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much. My name is Doris Thomas. I'm originally from the south side of Burns Lake. It's um, up in Ancha Lake. My dad's parents is. Um, the legend of the South Side, um, the great skin tie, and his wife, Elliot Cho, she's a medicine woman. When I met my husband, I was a wild teenager. And for, the, for his age, when I met him, and why he chose me over all, all the women that were after him, it kind of made me think today and when I looked at him and a lot of people come up to me and they ask me, um, how did you both ever get along with the age different, like he's 79 and I'm 44. And I remember my dad telling me when I first <coughs> met him, he said, he's gonna be a good man for you. <coughs> Don't worry about the age, it's love that counts. And Benny has 13 ki uh, kids, I got three boys from him. We had our ups and downs in our marriage when I met him and my dad just kept at me, stay with him, stay with him. And with the time I moved to Fraser Lake, um, I was about 16 or 17. I moved in with him. It was a real hard life and with my, my teenage life, I kind of thought I was tied down too soon and I was getting miserable and I just, um, just adapted things to my life. Like I started going visiting elders and I took on jobs as home support when I started out and within the time that I took home support, I met Benny's sister. I, honest to God, this is very funny. I didn't know she was Benny's sister till about six years later. All this time I was doing home support for her. And one day she'd be sitting there telling me a story and I said, you, you make it sound like you're Benny's sister. And she'd hit me on the shoulder. She said, Benny, don't tell you nothing. What's wrong with you? I said, no, I don't know nothing. I am Benny's sister. Like, she's a medicine woman, too. She's blind, and she healed a lot of people by hands. Within these years, I started doing home support, and One day she told me to drive her somewhere, so I did. I just followed directions like she's blind. She told me where to go, so I did. And 
I asked her, how long is this going to take? Because Benny might get mad if I don't get home. And she said, you never mind my brother. And so I said, okay. As soon as we got to this part where she told me to park the car, so we did. And I took her hand and we started walking. I didn't know, like, honest to God, I didn't know where we were going. She mentioned the trees, exact trees, just the way they are. She mentioned it, go this way and that way. And I stopped her halfway and I said, you're blind. I said, how do you know where to go? She said, I can go where I can, where I want to go because I got the power and I know where to go. We got up on top this mountain here, and which took us about half a day to get up there. There was a nice big rock up there, and I said, God, you can see everything. And she grabbed um, my hand, and then she took my face, and she said, you sit here and you close your eye. Don't look at everything. <coughs> Apparently, what I found out after why she took me up to it is, was um, that Tsekhu Shen and Stilako, I found out after after I had a vision, I found out where that place was. And today, if I tried to go up there, I wouldn't find it. It's only a one-time thing. She said it's going to take three days and three nights you get a vision. But she couldn't believe it. What happened to me, it was really unbelievable. She, she knew my great-grandma, Haliot Cho. Within six hours, I had vision. Really late at night, we were heading back. I didn't even need flashlight, because she knew where to go. Six hours after we went up on that Tsekushan, I had a vision. If there was a longer time that I could have, I'd explain the vision. And it's something that she doesn't just give to anybody. She knew I was ready, and she knew, she felt it that I can do good for the people. And I practically forgot about that for two years, and then we moved back to Burns Lake. Within a week, I started getting uh, results of their symptoms that the pain in their stomach was going away, the, the pain in the <coughs> eyes and ears, everything that was happening to them was going away. In the first two weeks that they've been on that medicine, more people started seeing me in the streets and wherever they'd catch me. And towards the end of the two years, I was bringing in 24 jugs a week for the elders in Burns Lake and Smithers and Prince George. I started bringing so much medicine that I was forgetting about my own life and the people that I've been making medicine for, the prescriptions that they got from their doctors all went in the garbage. We don't have to take this anymore. They went back for checkups to their doctors and everything was negative. How did you get healed? And they'd laugh at their doctor and said, I got better medicine than you. I was getting good compliments like that from a lot of the elders and I explained to them what to take and what to keep on taking and don't take it too much because it will override your health sometimes. And this lady here was right with the things that we're eating nowadays. People is not being careful. Each time I gave out um, a jug of medicine, I explained, I said, you eat your meals three times a day. Long time ago, we had breakfast, we had dinner and supper. Do the same thing when you take these medicine. If you don't eat right, it's not going to work. 
your health is important, the way you eat. And if you start fasting, you're going to create some problems. I told a lot of them, I said, never mind how you look. If you're fat, you're skinny, eat those three meals a day. You don't have to be sick. Keep pain out of your brain. <coughs> People tend to talk about pain. <coughs> oh, I'm sore. Oh, I pain here and there. I said, it's not the point. You're believing that your pain is there. Keep it out of your mind. Once you, you start thinking of your life, in a great way away from all this pain, anger, hurt. Your life can be more healthier. In my life as a young person, being a medicine woman, I was talking to many and people thought we were going crazy. We're always alone. We're always never out with our friends. But we have some special gift that was given to us. This is why we're, we are the way we are. It hurts in a lot of ways. And this, the reason I didn't bring any of my medicine is because when the vision I get, the symptoms are different on each person. Not one person is the same. She'll come in my dream and she'll tell me what to pick and it's different every time. And Benny was just telling me on the way here, he said, a lot of people like you, we need more people like you people around. God didn't make these trees and plants for nothing. They're, not, they're here for something. People should start seeing that. I just love what I was hearing from all these elders and for a young person like me, I, I'm learning yet and I just hope I learn a lot in these few days that I'm going to spend with most of you. I will explain some of the medicine of how it's used on what sickness and what types of things has been coming to me. I'll explain as much as I can. For a young person, I feel honored to be here. And I feel I'm not alone and I'm just happy. Thank you very much. I'm Mrs. Uh, Bernadette Kaito from Gila. And I really, I'm really a believer too. And I work with my hand, try to teach the young people how to make sleepers. Ask it, and nobody come to me. And I feel bad about it, but what can I do? I, they don't have to pay me to teach them how to cut the bark and how to make roots. And then when the fish comes, the same thing I teach them. I want to teach them how to cut fish, fix the net. Nobody come to me, even my own kids. When I tell them I want to teach you, they tell me, you're in the 40s, that's yes, we're in the 90. And when winter come, they tell me, Mom, you got dry salmon? I said, you're in the 90. I said, you don't need dry salmon, me, I'm in the 1940. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I'm going to teach them, they tell me, Mom, you're old timer. He said, that's yes, we're in the 90. And next time they come, Mom, you got this, you got that. I said, none. I said, you, say, you live like white man. I said, me, I'm Indian. That's what I tell them, everything. I want to teach them. They always tell me I'm old-fashioned. 
and they wouldn't listen. And that hurts. And then my grandchildren, the same thing, they, they live with their mom. And when me, I say something, my mom didn't even say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> they move their body because they don't listen. They don't want to listen. I said when I was growing up, I listened to my grandpa, I listened to my mom, I listened to my dad. They tell me what is right and what is wrong, and I try to tell them. And they won't listen. And beside my mom said, my grandma died when I was ten. And my dad said, I don't know who's my grandma. <coughs> so I just stick around with all the people, you know. The other elders say, Talk to. That's how I learn how to cut fish, how to do bad cut. I had a hard time learning. Thank you. My name is Margaret Nuski from Natalie Putin Nation. I'm 84 years old. I feel young at heart. <laughs> I couldn't go in and dancing without Ken. <laughs> for this is for my healing medicine, blackberry stems and young willow for healing source, boil them together and wash the wounds with it. Second, heart pit, heart jack pain pitch and soft spruce pitch, boil them together with baking grease and pinch of sugar. This is for boil to clear out all the pus. Third, jack pine pitch, boil it in the baking grease. This is to take by mouth for sore throat. Alder, number four, alder, boil, make tea out of it and boil it for a few minutes, drink it for ulcer. Fifth, Blackberry stem, raspberry stem, and wild rose bush stem. Boil them together, drink it to keep any sickness out of your body. This is the sixth. This is very important. Raspberry stems, young willow, alder, juniper, balsam, Wild raspberry stems, boil them together for four hours. This is to cure cancer. Drink it four times a day in empty stomach. I got them all right here. You could see them. Um. Popular bark, use it to deworm yourself, boil it, the bark, until the water is green. Drink it next day, followed by X-Lax to clear out whatever is in your stomach. Mountain ash, this this could be used by itself as raspberry stems, cranberry stems, boil them together, drink it for cold sick, good for 
when you call him. This is, this is what I do with my medicine. This, this thing that I have, I cure one person in Ohio who was dying of cancer and one, one man from Alberta, they were, they were dying of cancer. I cured them both with that. I cured myself with cancer too. I drank all these things together, boiled them together and drink it four times a day before meal and at bedtime. You don't have to drink coffee. Coffee is not good for your system. I don't drink coffee. I drink, I drink tea once in a while. I don't drink cup or anything. If I want to drink that kind, I, I drink juice. And this, now I have to, there are some people that are asking me for this medicine. There's one is, is sick with cancer in Yukon. She's asking me to make medicine for her. I send them like this. This is, this, this is one boiling in, th in three gallons of water. And when it start boiling, turn it down to low boiling for boil it for four hours. That's how I I send them away. I have to send that that woman some medicine, and I tell them how to boil it and how to drink it. The one that in in Ohio. She was dying of cancer. My brother-in-law had a friend in Vancouver. Her sister, and that's her that she lives in Ohio, and she was, he told me that to make medicine for her. I didn't send it to her. I gave it to her sister in Vancouver, and she sent it to her. About four months after, she told me that, she wrote to me and she told me that she was getting better. About six months after, her sister wrote to me in Vancouver and she said her sister was cured with that medicine, but I'd seen her with cancer. And the man in Alberta, he, he, he got cured too, but I did it. I, he had a cancer in his stomach and he got an operation and he couldn't get better. So her sister wrote to me, he knew, he knew, he, he got my name from from that woman from Ohio. She's a friend of hers, so she knew it by how she got cured. She wrote to me and and told her, told me to get some medicine for her brother that he's dying of cancer. And Months after, he told me that his brother was walking around and going around, and now I couldn't get in touch with him because he's always out. I don't know where he goes. Every day, sometimes I, once a week, I phone him to try to get, to try and get hold of him, see how he's getting along, but he's always out. He's gone already. He's better with that, but he's, he had an operation in the cancer from stomach. So I, 
I could I could say more, but I hold it up for now until next time. My name is uh, Betsy Leon Nikosli Port St. James. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Minnie Thomas, CHR Psychos, who has invited us in this conference. And I see that many of you that come from far and near, that I'd like to thank you for coming to myself. I didn't have any much uh, education. In those days, we went to school just, but uh, as soon as we get to 16 years old, they discharge us. And that's, that's why we, we didn't get enough education. When I came home, I just had to turn to my own tradition. Whatever my parents taught me, I still using it today. And I, I am very happy what they have taught me. Now, many of this, what I have learned from my parents, pass, trying to pass it on to my younger generation. At the time, my dad started teaching me some uh, medicine, herbs. I had family, and I didn't spend very much time with my parents. I had my own family that time. But whatever I, I have learned of you, I'll be sharing with you, hopefully, today and tomorrow that we will learn something from each other while we gathered here. Thank you. My name is Virginia Alexander. I'm from the NAC Asli First Nations. I'm elder advisor for family services for the last three or four years. I'm from the Carbo clan and I'm a widow and I belong to a five generation family. My mother who was my best friend and who taught me a lot of wisdom, she passed away. It's going to be a year on July the 30th. And during the past year I've been grieving for her and wearing black as is our tradition in our families. I have to do that for the whole year and keep away from dances and everything like that. I, when I first, they first told me to come uh, uh, to this meeting, I didn't know what we were coming, going to have, and I just learned yesterday that it was about medicines and uh, traditional medicine conference. I didn't know until yesterday. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to uh, thank Saika's First Nations for allowing us to come here. It's very good and I'm very, I feel humble and honored to have all you beautiful elders here from all over. Some of you, I know you for you years, like Miss Sophie Thomas, an honored elder from this area, and Auntie Mary John sitting over there. And this Betsy Leon, is she's my best friend, her and I have been to school together, we work together lots in our <coughs> territory. We do a lot of work and I, I do a lot of, um, my grandson is a traditional man in my family, he's 24 years old and he's, he, he learned from Sophie, he learned from Burns Lake, he belongs to Burns Lake band but I've raised him since he was 14 years old and he's the one that does the medicines in my family. He makes medicine for me, and he makes, he makes, uh, he learned from Ruth Tippett's, his other grandmother from Burns Lake. I know a lot about the, the medicines, like I've, I've 
when I got really ill, Betsy was making some for me, and so was Sonny Erickson. And you talk about uh, Ningwas, we had some last night at the uh, historic park. It was met by Mary's granddaughter. We had some there, we were at the park last night. I think in the next couple of days, we'll be learning from each other, like Betsy said, different ways of that we use the medicine. I know that a lot of people are using it for cancer. I think it prolongs the, 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 the traditional medicine, even our own Dr. Brown is talking about it. When I told him that I was coming here, I saw him yesterday, he said it's a good thing. He said that everybody should be using the medicines because like um, even I heard some really bad news about three weeks ago, like most of you knew, know that know that I've lost all my children through really bad accidents and I have only two of them left. The Chan Yu I Yud Nai, it's Fahida Tanit Eto Kanasan, I I Stabe Cha Khel Sakne Ne Dane Ne Tse Yak Yahan Tse Ku Cha Cancer be a hat la handed new Margaret Lady Margaret Nuski. The Asa the Chan Yu E bets at in the Asa la in in a lot in and the doctors of which Alu was in the heads at in Pili Pili never in a lit. This last end of Janet Ilamet Nizai. How many doctors of our September was on Batsana Sasia at Hatta and Jana was I, Dr. Brown in Sadani? Operations or Tilchetni in in Dasni. It was on the Scani out in Batalz at Batalz at our sins get Chanja. And what I'm explaining to them is that I, I had a lump in my hands in September and I went to two young, three young doctors, and I asked them, why is there a lump in my hand? They said, we could take it out or we could leave it, and that's all they told me. So I went to this other doctor yesterday, Dr. Brown, and he said that he's gonna make an appointment with, for me with us, uh, with a specialist. Sometimes, you know, like we, it's hard for us to understand these things, and then, like we, we need help in this medical, that's why I said that drinking Indian medicine, I think, and taking Indian medicine, our own traditional medicine, like what Sophie does, she's been doing that for her people all these years. Those are the best medicines. Those are the things that we should be taking instead of running to the pharmacy for pills, you know. There's not, not very much I have to say, but uh, I'll just be listening to to all of you, and you know, from from talking about this with each other, that's when we learn more about each other. For, from wherever we come from, we just learn and try to teach our young people these things. Because I, I mentioned it in Stellaco too, because you know the young people are our future leaders, and they have to know all these things before all of us elders are. After we're gone, who's going to teach them these traditions? I see. My name is Sophie Thomas, and I'm known all over, all over, I bet you, because I teach the medicines, herbal medicines. I have a book that is in the library, and I'm making one as a pocket size. That I will be selling. And then another thing is to pass on all what you know to help the future generation. I try to pass it on to help people. I like to be to help my people. It's no use for me to keep everything to myself. Nobody will use it. So why not give it out for the future generation? We don't buy it. It's out there. 
you just have a hard time to find it, that's all. Some places the bulldozer scraps everything, you know. I'm in my maybe six six place. And it has to be by water. And it's very hard for the plants to come back when once they scrape it, they burn it, they do everything. Never come back. Someday they will be in need of it. So it's good that you share all what you know. I learn from one another. I travel all over. There's not one place that I didn't go. And I'm still working on a film for the people to use when I'm going back home. So that's all I have to say. I have lots, but it takes time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I make Indian medicine myself. I originate from Glasden Nation, Sema Celestine. I my parents that grew me up were Robert and Marie Hansen, but my natural parents were Solomon Prince and my deceased mother, Juliet Prince, um, a member of Chief Kwa's great-great-grandchildren. I have been working for the elder, for the CSFS for two years, and it's an honor to be amongst all the respected elders here, guests. Like all of you, I'm very emotional. I feel the strength, the courage here, and I'm just so honored that we're here to have it videoed so even our grandchildren and the future generation could be able to witness this great event. You're all here to share with us your knowledge on the traditional medicines. And I just wanted to um, explain about Minnie, Minnie Thomas, the CHR. Um, she invited most of your guests here today, and she asked me to do a brief overview of why we invited you all here for this meeting. Uh, Minnie is also learning the traditional medicine from her mother, Sophie Thomas. And an elder once told her that out of respect for um, her mother, who is still alive today, that she um, avoids speaking in public and that she is respecting that honor. And I just wanted to let you know again, Bob Smith is our health director. I've been privileged to work with him this past two years. I've learned a lot from him. And Charlotte George is our assistant health director. And just to let you know once again, I will be explaining this in English, and Betsy Leon from Nagasli will explain it in Carrier. Um, all of you, I believe, have an understanding of why we're all here. You all shared your, your knowledge. And um, just to remind you again that this is a two-day conference, which will give you an opportunity to share with each other your medicines, your customs, the way you make your medicine, to share it with each other and so that we can preserve it and pass it on to our future generation. Thank you. Just <laughs> Enla Hatan de Foyota et dia did you honor Zotne, so did Zotne, and then de 
Um, and I've worked with uh, uh, a group of our people back home, the Inchuxin and Kwetkwa. And when they started out about four years ago, they were, um, they were uh, maybe four or five elders that were active, maybe, that they could get to the meetings. And so, the negotiators and the organizers were kept asking, how can we get these elders involved? And I said, you hire me and put me to work. Said, how do you do, what do you mean? I said, let me do some healing on that. When people are not well, they have a hard time to learn. And they have a hard time to listen when they're, when they're filled with headaches, backaches, and all this other stuff. Well, anyways, they put me to work healing, doing the hands-on healing with the elders. They had a big van four years ago, they never even used to fill that up. Today, they have one bus that holds, I think it's 22 people, and another one that holds 17. And they fill them both up. And that's using the hands-on healing. Some of our own medicines, the teas and stuff that I have time to pick. I don't have that all that time. And that's why I'm so interested in how we can work together in the people that make this medicine and how we can, instead of me going to a big company where I buy these herbs, how I could get it from you and pay you so that we can be self-supporting. I've been questioned myself because I am self-employed. I do get paid for the healing that I do because my horse that I have out there costs money to keep. My home, I gotta look after it. So I do get paid for what I do, but I go out. If the abuse, because of what happened to me as a young girl, and in my later years, the, the abuse, the sexual abuse that happened to me, the touch, if that was the problem, then I believe that touch is the answer. The good, the healing touch. I uh, used to go into the mountains a lot and ask, what do I do? What do I do? And I bathed in the rivers out there and in the cold waters and used the mud <coughs> and kept asking, what do I do? And that's where I got my answer. I don't know, some, I used to think I was crazy because there was a voice that used to tell me what to do. Unlike other people, they have dreams. But there's a voice that tells me what to do. So I started working with my hands. 
and we have massage therapists. But then because of uh, what happened to us as a people, the abuse and all the rapes, I knew that trust was an issue. So I have a technique that I, I use, a massage, where I do the massage with the person sitting on a stool. And then, after a few years, I got better and better and better. And now I have a, a table after I've done the massage with them sitting down, I put them on the table and I do energy work and get their whole bodies in, in alignment. I do the chelation, brain balancing, take away the pain, pump up the liver, and most of our a lot of, lot of the people that come to me, their livers are shot because of the alcohol and the drug abuse and the prescription drug, drug abuse. So after a while, there was people from the Denny Nation that were healing and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't explain it. And there was people healing from TB and all other diseases. Plus, I was giving natural medicines. And this voice says, you better go get a piece of paper. <coughs> So I got involved with people down south. And I found a healer, world-renowned healer down there, who goes all over the world. And she's the one that ordained me. It's a piece of paper, you know? So medical services asks me for something. I've got it looks nice. Um, from going down south, I started learning different techniques and how to straighten up uh, the spine, people that have crooked spines, how it affects the brain strokes, because it's all from the spine and from right down here in the spirit, the kundalini. A lot of times, I don't understand what it is I'm doing. I just do it. I have been emotional here today because for all these years I've been struggling. I wouldn't give up. And I've, I've been going out back east in Alaska down south and working all over and yet when I committed to staying home for one year to try and get enough so that I could keep going there it hasn't been working. My one year is almost up. I'm going back out. I, 
I know that some of the things that I've been doing and training people to do because of all the different techniques that I've learned, I need to pass it on. I've been so, so impressed with listening, listening to each one of you. And I can just imagine your struggle. Because I know what I went through to continue to go with what I believe in. In every area that I've gone to, even when I go down south, I always bring my bread and maybe jam, deer meat and salmon. It's part of me. So that I can share that with you. So that we have that connection. Another, another thing that I too have been struggled with was the alcohol. I was a chronic alcoholic. And I know what the alcohol and the prescription drugs did to me. I had to overcome my feelings towards doctors. I had to overcome that mistrust so that I can start working with them. In these past uh, two years, I had my first doctor patient. It was quite a thrill. And in just these last three months, I worked with a doctor healer, a surgeon, who's from down south. And we worked on a young boy who had a tumor in his brain. Yes, we all need to be acknowledged and recognized for what we do. When I first went down south, I was the only native in a group of healers of 200, and I was the only native. Since then, there's been more and more people that have been getting involved. And I'd really like to share a really special time for me, last December 5th, 98, I drove down to Sierra Madre, California, where my teacher was being honored by the Tibetan monks, His Holiness, the abbot, and four other monks from that ran monasteries. And they, on the 2nd, December 5th, he blessed the food, the prosperity bundles, the fruit, the cookies, and the wine. And then they passed it out. And they gave me a little cup filled it up with wine and because my teacher calls me her sister because there's a connection that we have I had a special place right in front and there was over 200 healers from all over the world and I held I looked at that cup and I whispered to Rosalind, Rosalind, I said, today 
I'm 22 years old. And she said, oh, my sister, congratulations. And everybody lifted up their cup and we drank. And oh, I felt such joy, no guilt, no hard feelings. And I remembered what there's this song, this, they, they talk about holy wine. I don't call myself an alcoholic anymore. I say I'm a recovered alcoholic. I believe anything can be healed. And maybe because I've worked with pe people with AIDS, I remember at one time I was on top of the mountain and we were looking at these weeds, this weed that came over from somewhere. And this was quite a number of years ago. And I remember that voice again. Maybe that's the medicine for this new disease that's come around called AIDS. I'm curious about that. I've never said it publicly till now. And I, I believe that between us, maybe one of you can discover that yes, maybe that napweed is the cure. I don't know. Because in that, in that book they call the Bible, doesn't it say something about every medicine, everything on this earth is a medicine? Something to think about. I uh, also have a friend back home who's an herbalist. He grows marijuana. And he grinds it up and he passes it out to people that want it and they make tea out of it. People that have very, very bad arthritis. And my mother swears by that tea. I know myself, I've tried it in a ceremony. <clears throat> Had a beautiful experience. I also tried the peyote in an all night ceremony. And I believe that that's what healed, began my real healing. Because the hurt that I had at one time had to come out. And I credit the medicine, peyote, for doing that for me. The, the medicines that I carry back there, because I, I, I work so much with my hands and uh, I travel a lot, I don't have time to make, to learn and to make all these medicines. And I think that this is something that our own people have to look at so that people like Doris don't have to go to another job for her livelihood. Pay her for what she's good at.
the charts back there, that big chart, that body chart, when I was, um, I was hired in northern Saskatchewan to um, try and break the cycle of uh, suicides in a community of 2,000 they were having as many as four a month, successful ones. The, the attempt, that's not even counting the attempted ones. When I went in there, I worked with the nurses and the doctor that used to come in, maybe once a week. But I started learning from the, doc, from the nurses parts of the body, okay, tell me where the disease is. And so they show me on that chart. And then I would know where to go in with the energy. And that's how I started working with the medical profession. The back Back there in back east there, we finally got in our last healing training that we had with the people for five days when we got Rosalind to come up, we had four doctors there and a lot of the nurses. See, I believe like I had to overcome my own feelings towards the people that oppressed me before I could work with them. I had to understand where they came from and how they thought and how they felt before I could work with them. Because one of the things that I know And this is what I learned from my brother, Chief Tamihush, Roger Adolf, her friend. Um, when he was so angry towards the fisheries, and we were doing all kinds of blockades, and they were jailing our people, because it was my family they jailed a lot, a lot of the time. I kept telling him, don't get mad, don't get mad, understand him where he comes from. He thinks he knows, he's been studying from these books, but we don't think we know, we know. And until you get rid of your anger and start understanding him. You'll always be butting heads. So when he started bringing this man down to the river and up to the mountain, in two years time, that man got so sick he couldn't continue with his job. He quit and he went back to his own country. So this is something that I've been thinking about and I've, I've asked, I asked my spirit, I asked the spirit to help me in whatever it is that I need to say that has to come out because I get so rattled at times when I don't ask. Because the thing is, when I'm working and healing, I know it's spirit at work, and boy, oh boy, do I ever have fun. In the last lady I've been working with in Kamloops, I, not in Kamloops, but in Lillooet. The doctors gave up on her. 
we sent her home to die. And uh, she said she wanted to see me, so I went in. I've been working with her for 10 days. I watched her having her supper there. After her second treatment, she was eating like a horse. They had her wheeling downtown in her wheelchair, talking to everybody, waving around, you know. This is a lady who was dying. Even though I knew she was dying, I still had fun with the disease because I've learned that that is something disease does not understand is fun and laughter. I never ever say I'm going to fix anyone. Never. That's not what I do. But I also know I will do the best that I can, and that's all we can do. That's all each one of us can do. I know that helping to people to cross over is also part of my job. I've learned that in these last three years, to help people cross over. So there's always of healing that we as a people can do. And I know because of my anger and my frustration with the system, I've had to learn to understand where the Shama comes from. Why? They do what they do. One of the things I've learned is that number four is like a magical number. And when I went into a, this one community where there was all those suicides, after going in there and changing that energy. They never had one suicide all the time I was there for two years. But the thing is that I know people got to continue it. You can't just, oh, forget it, everything's fixed and let's go on, we don't need these people anymore. You've got to continue. It's just like people that I've done hands-on healing with and with uh, medicines, natural medicines, <coughs> people that have gone back to the alcohol and the drugs it seems like the sickness always comes back and it comes back double. So I've learned from those experiences to warn the people. No, you can't go back to the alcohol and the drugs and your own, your old way of life. You've got to change your whole behavior, change your lifestyle to stay well. I believe in preventative medicine. My God, you don't have to be sick to come and see me. It's a lot, lot easier when you're well. But I really, really enjoy doing healings on people that continue, like my brother comes to see me once a month, whether he needs it or not. He says he just loves the feeling. In my family, 
I have quite a family. Uh, their names are Adolphs. From Lillowit. No, yeah, Sam. Sam. That's my brother. He does healings. I have another brother, Twachman, Bob. Maisie knows him. He's a healer. I have a grandson who's probably your relative here. He's from Hazelton. He's a healer. He knows it. I have a daughter who's gone through some of the, the most difficult time in her life. High education. When she finished, she lost it. She's a healer. How do we Combine the best of both worlds. I'm slowly learning it. I have, haven't have got any, any, any issue at all with buying my medicine anymore. Because I don't know any one of our people that makes as much as I need. I have a lady in mission that I buy the liver, kidney, and the pancreas cleanse from. And a lot of our people need that because of the alcohol and the drugs. So, you know, listening, listening to the medicines that you make how can we work together with this? That's my question. I'd like it. I'd like the organizers of this conference to think about that, you know, and how we can do it. I am involved with healers from all over the world. The Rosalind came to Vancouver not too long ago and she opened it up to all the, all the healers, people that she's trained. And there was over 40 healers that came to the Squamish nation on their own expense. <coughs> to do healings with our people. So, you know, think about this. It's really exciting. The people from Germany are uh, are really they're people, they're like us, you know. They have problems like us, alcohol and drugs. And yet I've met them down south at big healing conferences that I go to. And in these past years, these past eight years, eight, nine years, that I've been going to these uh, healing learning, I have been paying my own way. And it's quite a bit to go to one of these conferences. It's a lot of money. I pay at least a thousand dollars American for five days, six days of training. Plus my travel over and back. And I've traveled as far as Tucson. I've seen paintings over there, very similar to the paintings that I see in the Stein Valley. 
and the people in northern Saskatchewan, the paintings that they have are very similar to what I see in way down south. So I am very, I feel very humbled and so grateful <coughs> to be at a conference with my own people after so many years. My mother, Maggie Adolph, always tells me to tell the people she said hello. She is 82 years old and strong. She's a, a lady that has told me never to quit, to keep going. And uh, a lot of the things that I've learned, I've had to learn from going out elsewhere. Because I myself was a product of the residential school. And uh, I spent 10 years in that school and was kicked out. So, the thing I know my job is, is to heal, take the memory out of the cells and start reprogramming the cells because that's where the illness is in the cells. Now, before I end, I gotta tell you this funny story. But four days ago, I went out to pick some of that magic, uh, that wonderful plant that you showed there, the aqua. We call aqua. Uh, what do you what do you, what do you call it? That one with the they're they're in flower now. <coughs> not my marijuana. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have never shown yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the hackwa. It's it's a uh, wild rhubarb, I think. Oh, no. yeah. Seal, yeah. Right. Mom been wanting that, you know. So I well, I'll go out, you know. I'll go out and get some of this hackwa. So my son and I went out. Well, there I am up in the mountain there in the bush and everything, and just. Short sleeve, you know. And two years ago, I tried it, and I got I got this sore lip. <clears throat> I figured, well, maybe it won't bother me this time. <clears throat> so I ate some because I love it. Well, guess what? I got that sore, all that that lip again, and all this here. So. No, I, did, I didn't get beat up, I got beat up by the bush, so that's what <laughs> happened, you know. But mom, she was happy, she got, all, she got her aqua, you know. <laughs> so she, she, she uh, freezes that. That's the modern way now. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, and uh, I'm just, so grateful that you asked me to be here. Oh. Pat? It's coming around to that time. We've time to wrap up the day. And I guess uh, maybe tomorrow we'll have a recap of all our discussions. We'll have a but what I've really enjoyed today as being your chair is just 
sitting here listening and taking everything in and uh, and really learning a lot and maybe to um, I, I'd like to tell you a story um, my uncle wasn't feeling well and my uncle has passed on now but he wasn't feeling well and he asked me to call a nurse and he wanted to nurse to come to check him so I I phoned the nurse downtown and I said would you please come up I said my uncle would like to have you you check him I said just the, the pulse uh, I said he's not feeling too well so the nurse came up and she said to me um, my uncle was sitting on the couch he had an old couch in the house and uh, I was standing there and she, she looked at me and she says, could you explain what I say in native to him? And I'm standing there and my uncle is sitting down and I'm standing there and she said, uh, I'd like to take his blood pressure, so could you please ask him to relax? And I said, um, I'm sit standing there thinking, I thought, now, how in the world do you say relax in our language? <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing there and I'm thinking, and the nurse kept looking at me. She's wondering why I'm not telling my uncle to relax. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I stood there and I, I, was, I was standing there, standing like this, and I said, hmm. And uncle looked at me and I said, I said, Uncle. I, I said, God, <laughs> and then I told him, I said, Uncle, it's in play. 